spiritual battle that you and I are winning, and we will win, is such that we will rehearse it to our future generations, and they will know, they will hear from us our testimony of how Yah intervened in our behalf and brought the powers of the earth to their knees in order to liberate Yah's people. Hi, this is Barry Phillips, the 10-minute Torah, day number two, the Torah portion bow, meaning either go, go into, or come, come into, depending upon context. Let's go to the book of Shemot, or Exodus chapter number 10. And as you begin the chapter, you will see that Moshe and Aaron are again sent to Pharaoh. And in verse number two, just as we shared in the opening, it is for the sake of being able to testify to future generations about Yah's intervening power that the following scenario is produced. Verse number three, Moshe and Aaron come into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus said Yahweh Elohim of the Hebrews, To when shall you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. Yah desires that his people be free in order that they worship him with all of their being without restriction, lifting their hands, dancing with their feet, which you do not do if you're in shackles and in chains. We think of personal liberty and personal freedoms maybe as a result of a democratic form of government such as we have here in the United States, a representative constitutional republic. We, we promote the ideals and the grandeur of our personal liberties guaranteed to us in our Constitution. But it's not an American concept. This is a righteous concept that people are free, that they are able to lift their hands without restriction to the Most High, and that they're able to dance. Now, give me 30 seconds here for a little personal soapbox. If you have opportunity, whether you're at home worshiping with music on or just in contemplation about the greatness of our Elohim, lift your hands to Him. Dance with your feet. Now, if you're not a dancer, certainly you can hop on one foot and then hop on the other. If you're not physically able to stand and do such things, uh, lift your hands, if at all possible. Worship Him, lifting your mind, your heart, your being to Him, and give Him the worship that He is worthy of. And especially this applies if you're in a congregational setting. Moving on. So Pharaoh, his heart's been hardened. He's refusing to listen. And Yah says in verse 4, Or else, if you refuse to let my people go, see tomorrow I am bringing locusts within your borders. He fails to connect, evidently, with the threat that is being made. Hail has just come and destroyed the barley harvest. This is the initial grain harvest of the year. It has also completely destroyed the flax harvest, from which they would have been able to make their fine mitzvah linen. All of that's been taken away from them. The crops have been completely consumed. What is in the field right now is wheat and spelt. These are grains that they desperately need for food so that they can survive. Locusts coming in would completely wipe that out. Yah says to him that he is going to liberate his people Moshe says in verse 9, we're going with our young, our old, our sons, our daughters, our flocks, our herds. We're going, we're taking everything, leaving not a hoof behind. Pharaoh, he's not impressed, and he says no. So in verse 12, Moshe is commanded to stretch out his hand over the land of Mitzrayim for the locusts to come, and a wind blows from the east all day, all night, and the next morning. Locusts cover the ground, they fill the skies, they devour every part of the wheat, the spelt, and all of the fruit off of the fruit trees, eating all of the grass, all of the leaves, everything that is green, it's consumed. This is total vegetation desolation. It's all gone. Now, when you and I 
exhale, we breathe in uh, a mixture of uh, oxygen, nitrogen, etc. We breathe this in, we exhale carbon dioxide. We need the trees. We need the 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 uh, the green things to make the exchange. What we're looking at here then is great pollution of the air. Now, I won't say that they were unable to breathe, but certainly the air quality index plummeted, and now they are tired. They are physically drained. The food is gone. There's no recovery from this. They're looking at famine and starvation. What's interesting then is the reason that Israel is there to begin with is because of a famine. Now, Mitzrayim is going to be experiencing a famine. So we understand then that Yah is saying, I'm not playing. I want my people free. If we go to the book of Revelation, chapter number nine, and as we turn there, it's just interesting how many parallels there are in the events of the book of Revelation and this entire Exodus story, this this plagues of, of Egypt story. And Revelation chapter number nine, when the fifth messenger sounds, a star falls from heaven, and a key of the pit of the deep was given to him. He opens the pit of the deep, and smoke went out of the pit like a smoke of a great furnace. The sun was darkened, also the air, because of the smoke of the pit. So again, we're looking at poor air quality connections. Out of the smoke, <clears throat> locusts came upon the earth, and authority was given to them as the scorpions of the earth possessed authority. And it said to them that they should not harm the grass of the earth, nor any green matter or any tree, but only those men who did not have the seal of Elohim upon their forehead. It was given to them that they should not kill them, but to torture them for five months. Their torture is like the torture of a scorpion when it stings a man. And the day they shall seek death and not find it. Here's something interesting. In this passage, these locusts are Shedim, S-H-E-D-I-M, Shedim, which is the Hebrew word for demons. Demons are, they're not human, they're not displaced humans, they're, they're not messenger beings like we would say, we, what we would call angels. They're somewhere in between some kind of spiritual realm, dark entity. And their, their means are... Um, uh, oppression, depression, um, possession, if you will. They seek to harm. They seek to destroy. They deceive. They lie. And so these Shadim, um, the sowed level writings of, of the rabbis say that they feed on the smoke of illicit offerings. But they're given five months of authority this is between the time of the first month of Aviv, the time of the first spring feast, and the seventh month of Tishri, which begins the fall feast. It's in this five-month period of time between the feast seasons that we number 147 days. What's also interesting then in connecting to that is that Jacob, Yaakov, lived to be 147 years is this then the time of Yaakov's trouble, a five-month period of time? If you read in the book of Yoel or Joel, chapter number one, you see four waves of devouring locusts that come in and consume the ground. Why did they come? Because of the disobedience and the wayward hearts of Yah's people. Maybe you could say those of Yah that were refusing to be sealed by him. And so Yah says that he is bringing the locusts, he brings the locusts, and Pharaoh offers a compromise. Are we going to be resolute in the word and trust Yah, or are we going to accept compromise? I tell you, when the locusts come, you want the seal in your forehead. You want to be acknowledged as on the side of the Most High. 
Now's the time to make up your mind. Now's the time to walk in your righteousness before him. Don't wait till the smoke pollutes the air. More tomorrow. To the end, shalom. 